Hello everybody, thank you for joining me for a follow-up video to another I'd made about some of my rare and antique books I've been collecting and I I just had to make this because this time I have even juicier stuff than last time. Apparently, my little girl Nova is going to be joining us. Okay, last time around... See, I've got most of these all in one place here. I shared with you this edition of Omar Khayyam's Rubaiyat. This was sometime in the 1930s. This time around, yeah, this one has some gorgeous artwork in it. This time around, I want to share with you, these are all right here, different versions of the same book. The most beautiful version of it ever. This is the perfect way to start this. I've got as much light on this as I can get. I'm going to try to brighten this up before I process this video. My wife who is Persian. She was born and raised in central Iran. She bought me this as a gift. Now, this is extremely rare, particularly here in the United States. This is, I believe, 2007. This was printed only in Iran. Looks like a book here, but this is actually just the cover. As you can see, golden gilded pages. One of the most amazing things about this, you can see the texture on these pages here, this silver. The amazing, amazing work done on the look of the book. It's a beautiful, wonderful book as it is. I'm taking time on this one because I want you to appreciate the look of it. Oh, I was wrong. This is even newer than I expected. First edition, Winter 2010. Yeah, published in Tehran. As you can see, it's written in four languages, Persian, English, French, German. One of the most precious gifts I've ever been given. Of course, a book that looks this wonderful has to come with amazing artwork, too. And as you can see... So, you will not find this for sale here in the United States. All right, I won't linger on it too much longer. That's the best of the bunch. Here, very briefly, 
We'll go through my other editions too. You saw the 1930s edition. I believe it was 1937. This one. Published Avenal Books, New York. And as often is the case with these very old books, we don't get a date on this one. I know I could easily find it out, but I'm not going to do that now. Published Folio Society, 1970 in London. Boy, this does have a 70s feel to it, too. So you get the idea with this one. Okay, this is the one with artwork by the amazing artist Will Pogany. Am I pronouncing that right? Is it Pogany or Pogeny? Pogeny? Anyways, very distinctive art from him. There's the name for those of you who want to look him up. Do we not have a date on this one either? New York, no date. This one with illustrations by Edmund Dulac. Published New York, let me guess, no date. Judging by the feel of it and looking at the text, the font type, this one feels like 1940s or 50s. Okay, let me share with you now one of my other most precious finds. I will never, just like the Persian edition of the Rubaiyat I just shared with you, I will never resell this. Complete works of Shakespeare. Very much leather bound. Let me show you that cover there. Judging by that alone, let me let you guess a time frame that this was published. I found this for $100 at a local antique store. Here's a note. This was once a gift to someone. 
can see a year there. I don't remember if that's the exact year this was published. It may have been a year or so before. We're going to find out in a moment. Most of this is in near excellent condition. Because of that, you can see the image there imprinted over the other artwork because this book is so used to just remaining closed. Okay, published Porter and Coates, Philadelphia. Aha. 1876. This is a beautiful, beautiful edition. With a dedication by John Hemming and Henry Condell. With a brief life of Shakespeare before. There's some slight darkening at the edges, and that's about it. Almost every page is in near excellent condition. Now let's find some of this artwork. I don't remember the name of the artist. Oops. Celia from As You Like It. for another one before we close this. Even the owner of the antique shop where I bought this was surprised that she had it in there. Having realized that, when I brought it up to buy it, she seemed a little reluctant to sell it. This is gorgeous, 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 gorgeous. So, 1876. Keep my Shakespeare stuff together. Okay, what's this? Hamlet. Edited by W.J. Rolfe. I actually don't remember anything about this, but I, apparently I got it for five dollars. What year is this? Shakespeare's Hamlet. Aha! Uh -huh. 1906. Nothing particularly special about this one other than its age. All right, Nova, you're going to have to move, honey. Well, maybe you won't. I just need one of these. This, actually, let me give you a shot of all three of these. This is the complete book of the Thousand and One Nights. The complete Burton translation. That's Sir Richard Burton with his notes, the terminal essay, and a complete index and a thousand and one decorations by Valenti Angelo. It seems a lot of people are not even aware. You, you will often find, if you go to a normal bookstore and you just look for the Arabian Nights or Thousand and One Nights, 
you're going to find one book. And a lot of people don't seem to know that it's abridged. <laughs> that it's tales, it's actually tales from the Thousand and One Nights. Anyways, let's have a look at it. Or at least one of them. Um, I don't remember the exact year, but I know this was sometime... This edition is sometime in the 1960s. Thousand Nights and a Night. All right, Nova, you're kind of in my way, darling. I'm sorry, honey. This is in pretty, pretty, pretty good condition. Also, I think th I mean, this whole set, all three books, have the feel of having just been bought and collected and sat on the shelf for a while. Let's get the full title here. The Book of the Thousand Nights and a Night, a plain and literal translation of the Arabian Nights entertainments made and annotated by Richard F. Burton. Decorated with illustrations by Valenti Angelo, Heritage Press, New York. Okay, this edition originally 1934, renewed 1962 by the George Macy Companies. People, all of you, whoever you are, whatever your age, whatever your, the culture you were raised in, you need to find this full version. It doesn't matter that some tales are retold and that some themes are going to feel repeated. It doesn't matter. It's all about perspective. This is just because it's the original, you need to have it. Whether it's this one or another edition of the complete books. I don't even know if I can pick out which is my favorite. Anyways, no need to pull out the other two books. You get the idea with this one. Nothing particularly special about the artwork in this one either, but it's nice to have it there. Okay. Okay. Let's go here next. Goethe's Faust. Pretty bland looking so far, huh? Well, let's have a closer look. How much did I get this for? Five dollars. But hang on a minute. We've got a library stamp of March 10th, 1908. When was it published? Portrait of the Earth author. Translated by Anna Swanwick. A.L. Burt Company Publishers, New York. What is the date? I don't have a date. And I know I looked this up, too. Well, we know it's no later than that. Anyways, yeah, it kind of bland. Another one that's a little bit bland looking, but worth having for a collector. So this is now over 100 years old. And one of the very cool, interesting things about this find was that folded inside it, let me set this down quickly so I can unfold this, folded inside it I found this, it's the front page of a German newspaper, Leipzig, from March 1932, with a story about the author.
pretty amazing, huh? I know, I know, I need to wrap this in plastic, put it elsewhere, and then just leave it alone. Okay. Um, this one I actually forgot about, that I have this. This was very exciting find for me. I need to find a way to carefully remove that tag. Dollars. Let me let you look at the condition of this. Well, no, 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 no. I want to tell you what it is and how old it is, and then we're going to look at that cover again. Rob Roy. This is actually only volume one. One of two volumes, published New York, 1818. Very understandable weathering here. All the titling there is, of course, weathered right away. But 20 bucks, very much well worth it. Nearly 200 years old here. I believe were kind of famous in the 1920s. These little, they call these the little leather books. This is Dante's Inferno, volume one. I don't know if you can see that print very well. There we go. Little Leather Library. Published New York. I don't think we have dates published in these, but it was, it was 1920s. I have some of these for a few Shakespeare plays, too. So it's just this tiny little book. Let's see. Lady of the Lake. Oh, I went through that in the last video. Oh, how funny. The Maxims of Methuselah. This is a funny book. Gillette Burgess. To those unfamiliar with his writing, you might take this as an early, you know, somebody might walk by and find this and take it as an early collection of a wise old man's sayings. And in a way it is. But it's intended to be humorous. The artwork is great, too, as you can see. Let's look at the full title. The Maxims of Methuselah, being the advice given by the patriarch in his 960 and ninth year to his great-grandson at Shem's coming of age, in regard to women, by Gillette Burgess. Illustrations by Louis Fancher. Published in New York. Um, what is this? 1910, something like that. 1907 by Francis Frederick Stokes. I love that. You're going to see that at the top of every page. Actually, you can get an idea <laughs> by the of the uh, content of the what's going on in this book by the name of this illustration. I counsel thee, introduce not female contemporaries one to another. 
it's fun stuff. Frankenstein, Mary Shelley. Got this for six dollars fifty cents. To be honest with you, I have never read Frankenstein. Can you believe that? I've never read this book. I know all about Mary Shelley and Byron and Shelley, the other Shelley, Percy, and their private lives and their politics, but I've never read Frankenstein. Maybe this edition I found here should be my first. What do you think? This doesn't have a date on it, but it feels to me like 1940s. Maybe late 30s, but probably 40s or 50s. There's really nothing else to tell other than by the, the, the look and feel of it. What do we have here? Cicero's offices and moral works. Wow. Advertisements for other books right up front rather than the book's own publication date or other information. <laughs> oh, wow. So many of these do not have dates. You go back far enough. Cicero's Three Books of Offices and Other Moral Works. There he is. Aha, we do have a date. Look at that. 1875. London. Scipio's Dream. Ah. I forgot that was in here. Scipio's Dream, letter to Quintus on the duties of a magistrate. Cato Major, an essay on old age. Laelius, an essay on friendship. Paradoxes. Translated by Cyrus R. Edmonds. It has been a very, very long time since I read this. Of course, this particular edition is new to me. Time to revisit with this one. So, as old as the Shakespeare. Okay, I think that's about it this time around. My God, I think I've, I'm missing some. Oh well, I'm not having them, not finding them now. Maybe I'll show you these too. Once I show you the inside of this. Other old book collectors will remember, too. Bulwer Lytton. Does that font look familiar? This company, I can't remember quite yet, put out a lot of famous authors of this time, mid-19th century. In these collections, I don't remember which of Lytton's books this has, but there's a few in here. Some of the artwork. Works of Edward Bulwer Lytton. This one has Pelham, Paul Clifford, Zanoni, and Falkland. Um, okay, no date here, but I know these are late 19th century, as in probably. Aha, there we go. Preface to the edition of 1828. But I think there's another preface that makes it later. Okay. 
The latest preface was written, London, 1848. So, there you go, mid-19th century. Okay, I think that might be it for this time around. I'm sure there will be another edition, maybe maybe a year or two. Because I will continue collecting. I'm just finding this to La La Ruch. Huh. Oh yeah, based on a Persian story. How old is this one? Very much falling apart, as you can see. Well, this is probably also early 19th century. I would guess somewhere around 19, between 1907, 1910. This is beautiful type here. Maybe the preface will have an end date. Nope. Ah! 1822. I don't believe that. I think that's when the initial preface was written. I just don't think this book is quite that old. Rook. That's definitely related to the name of a rook in chess. And in Persian, it's it means face. And it can also mean tower. But a bit of a modern elaboration on an old myth. Okay. Yeah, that's Lady of the Lake again. All right, this time I mean it. <laughs> We're done for now. Thank you, everybody, for joining me and sharing in this exploration of these wonderful, wonderful versions of these books I was able to find. Until next time, ciao.